Hello English speaking world, all the German learners, I greet you. In this video we will be looking at prepositions. Prepositions are usually short words with an abstract meaning. As the name suggests, they stand before something and that is a noun phrase. A noun phrase is a noun and the article, adjectives and possibly adverbs that it comes with. Let's take a look at this noun phrase. Der sehr große Mann. The very tall man. As you can see, this noun comes with an adjective, an adverb and a definite article. Before the article is where you will always place the preposition. Every preposition comes with a case. It can either be accusativ, dativ or genitiv. The case of a preposition has no meaning though and it has to be learned together with the preposition. When using a preposition, the noun phrase that follows must always have the case of the preposition. Many verbs need a preposition to be combined with noun phrases. Like in English, gehen zu is to go to. For this video I've drawn some pictures to help you understand the concept of the most important German prepositions. We're starting with the accusative ones. This picture shows a letterbox and a present and a finger pointing to a happy face. It shows the preposition für, which means for. This is an arrow that stops at a wall. It shows the concept of gegen which means against. This ring is pierced by an arrow. It shows the concept of durch, which means through. By this red cross I mean ohne, which means without. These arrows make a circular movement with a dot in the middle. It shows the concept of um, which means around. Let's look at some examples. Der Brief ist für den Lehrer. The letter is for the teacher. Der FC Bayern spielt gegen den FC Köln. The FC Bayern plays against the FC Köln. Das Auto fährt durch den Tunnel. The car drives through the tunnel. Er ging ohne den Pass zum Flughafen. He went to the airport without the passport. Er geht um die Ecke. He goes around the corner. Let's look at important dative prepositions next. You see an arrow coming from a box. It shows the concept of aus, which means out, and also from. Here you see a place next to a person and the same inside his house. It shows bei, which means at. These are two people together. And this is a hand using a tool. It's the concept of mit, which means with. The next preposition has three meanings. This is a person following someone else. Here you see the temporal meaning. And this here shows a directional meaning towards a place that has a name, like a city or a country. The preposition is nach, which means after and to. What could this be? A clock as the origin of an arrow. It shows the idea of Zeit, which means since. And here we have simply an origin of an arrow. It's von, which means from. Here we have an arrow pointing at a person and a building. It's a concept of direction. It's zu, which means to. Let's look at some examples. Er geht aus dem Haus. He walks out of the house. 
Sie ist beim Friseur. She is at the hairdresser. Die Eltern gehen mit dem Lehrer. The parents go with the teacher. Nach der Arbeit fährt er nach Holland. After work, he drives to Holland. Seit der Pause sind alle müde. Since the break, everyone is tired. Die Tomaten sind vom Supermarkt. The tomatoes are from the supermarket. Sie geht zum Supermarkt. She goes to the supermarket. Some prepositions merge with the dative article dem. Remember these five prepositions. Zu, bei, von, an, in. When they meet the article dem, they will merge into zum, beim, vom, am, im. You might see them not merged sometimes. The reason is dem also has the meaning that. So, if you want to say, for example, I'm at the cafe, you would say, ich bin beim Café. But if you want to say, I'm at that cafe, you would say, ich bin bei dem Café. But don't worry about it too much. Just merge these prepositions when you use them. Let's go to the genitive prepositions. These are the most plentiful and the least used at the same time. It is sufficient to know these three of them. Okay, this looks abstract. It shows A, arrow, B. I'm referring to logic here. It's causality. It shows wegen, which means because of. This preposition is mostly used with dative in spoken German and genitive in written German. The reason is, Germans often avoid the genitive and use the dative instead. It is likely that this preposition will one day be a dative preposition. Here you see a red arrow going through green arrows, ignoring them. It shows trotz, which means despite or in spite of. Here you see a finger pointing at what someone said. And here's another finger pointing at a text like a newspaper. It's the concept of laut, which means according to. By the way, this preposition has the same spelling and pronunciation as the adjective that means loud. Let's look at some examples. Wir können wegen des Wetters nicht kommen. We can't come because of the weather. Wir sind trotz des Regens gekommen. We came in spite of the rain. Laut des Berichts wurden 40 Menschen verletzt. According to the report, 40 people were injured. Now, there is one more important category of German prepositions. It has to do with these two pictures. What is she doing? In English, the answer would be the same for the left and the right picture. She's jumping on the table. But in German, we distinguish between a movement to another place and an activity at a place. Simply put, if the place changes, use accusative. If not, use dative. There are nine prepositions of location that can have this distinction. They are called dual prepositions. An easy way to remember them is to write them around the nine. Where can something be at the nine? Auf, on, unter, under, über, over, in, in, an, at or by, neben, next to. This is usually combined with links and 
rechts, left and right, like links neben der neuen, zwischen, between, hinter, behind, vor, in front of, and before. Let's look at some examples. I picked examples to show the contrast between Akkusativ and Dativ. Der Vogel fliegt in das Zimmer. The bird flies into the room. Der Vogel fliegt im Zimmer. The bird is flying inside of the room. Der Fisch schwimmt unter die Brücke. The fish swims under the bridge. Der Fisch schwimmt unter der Brücke. The fish is swimming beneath the bridge. Ich fahre auf die Autobahn. I drive onto the highway. Ich fahre auf der Autobahn. I'm driving on the highway. Der Mann geht neben die Frau. The man goes next to the woman. Der Mann geht neben der Frau. The man is going next to the woman. All right, let's repeat what we've learned. A preposition is an abstract word and it stands before a noun phrase. It comes with a case that has to be used in the noun phrase. Dual prepositions have either the accusative or the dative case, depending on the meaning. To a place needs accusative. At a place needs dative. Some prepositions merge with the article dem. They are beim, zum, vom, am, im. Here is a list of all the prepositions from this video, sorted by their case. All right, that's it. I'm sure you've learned a lot about prepositions today. I suggest you learn the prepositions together with the male definite article. This is how Germans do it. Für den, mit dem, wegen des. This way you will automatically choose the right case when you want to use the preposition. If you have any questions, please write them in the comments. As always, like and share. Und vielen Dank für Ihre Aufmerksamkeit.